Hello and welcome back to Switch and Lever. Long-time viewers of this channel are probably aware of my love for laser cutters, but until now there hasn't really been a video that's been solely focused on its use, so I figured it was time for a change. In this video we will cover one of the most basic principles of laser cutting, but one that beginners often struggle with, making a custom box with properly fitting box joints. So let's get going and shoot some lasers! Well, I may have been a little bit over eager there, so let's turn the laser cutter off and sit down in front of the computer first and talk a little bit about box joints. Box joints are probably the second simplest joint in woodworking, short of the simple butt joint. Unsurprisingly it gets its name because it's a very common and strong joint used in boxes. Basically it consists of interlocking fingers on two pieces of wood that fit well into each other. In most boxes you find, you'll find fairly small fingers, but they can definitely be made wider at the expense of less glue surface and a weaker box construction. Unlike a dovetail joint, the joint is not self-interlocking and definitely requires glue to be held tight. But also unlike a dovetail joint, everything is cut through the board at a 90 degree angle, making construction much much easier. They're commonly made in a jig on a table saw, but as you probably guessed by now, that this is where our trusty laser cutter comes in. Designing a box joint is actually fairly simple. You obviously need to know the dimensions of the box you want to make, either the inside dimensions and add the thickness of the material you have, or directly by the outer dimensions of the box. Here is the really good news for those of you who don't want to bother either with CAD or by manually drawing your vectors for laser cutting. There are box generators online into which you can feed your dimensions and it will spit out a file which you can take directly to your laser cutter. However, the downside is that this will only get you the most basic of boxes, which may be fine for you, but if you want to make a custom box it's better to draw it from scratch. What I've done here, which will be more apparent later in the video, is to add two black rectangles on each piece, which will be etched part way through the plywood I'm using to create two grooves into which the pieces to fit the bottom of the box as well as the sliding lid will go. This obviously requires a bit of extra setup time in the laser cutter, cutting out test pieces to make sure you get deep enough engraving for your grooves. Now here comes a trick which I hinted of in the video title. The laser cutter has what's called a kerf. But what's a kerf? A kerf is basically the amount of material that is removed in a cut. Imagine if you will a table saw. The amount of material that the saw removes when cutting is the kerf. A laser cutter, even though the laser beam is very very narrow, also has a kerf even if it's not as apparent as on the table saw. The width of this kerf varies from laser cutter to laser cutter and from material to material, so you have to cut a bunch of test pieces to figure this out for yourself. Simply you can cut a square of a known dimension and measure it with calipers and note down the difference. If we look at this box joint test piece, it was cut exactly on the line as drawn. And as we can easily see, the pieces do not fit together well. If we let go of them, they just fall apart. So if we were to glue these together, it would probably work. But it would also be a very sloppy glue joint and the glue would have to fill in a lot of empty space, which wood glue is not really designed to do. So how do we solve that? Well, once you finish designing your box, you need to simply offset all the cutting lines by the width of the curve. In my case, the curve ended up being 0.2 millimeters, so I offset the cut lines by the same amount. Once cut, the pieces should have a snug fit. Looking at this second test piece, we can also confirm that that is the case. It fits, it is snug, but it holds together quite well even when we let go of the pieces. 
This is exactly what we want. But wait, there is more. The length of the fingers can also play a very big role in how our final box will look like. If we cut the length of the fingers to the thickness of our material, in this case 4mm, and then glue them together, the burnt ends will be visible in the final joint. You may like this, in which case you can completely ignore the following step. Personally, I think it just makes it look like every other laser cut box, and that is something that I would like to avoid. Thankfully, it's very simple to fix. Just make the fingers longer so they stick out further. Once glued together, they will sit proud of the surface and can easily be sanded down flush. And with that, the burnt ends are gone. So I think at this point we have everything down pat. So let's cut out our actual box. While laser cutters do really well on wood and plastics, I would not recommend cutting circuit boards on them. If you have a need for custom made circuit boards of a high professional quality, why not head on over to PCBWay instead? PCBWay has been a long supporter of this channel by now, and I am very pleased with the quality of their circuit boards. Ordering could not be easier. Upload your Gerber files and set up your order. With 10 PCBs starting for as low as only $5, what do you actually have to lose? Head on over to PCBWay today! So now with all our pieces cut out, it's simply a matter of applying what we have learned so far. Depending on your wood, and especially how dirty it is to laser, you may have to prepare the pieces before gluing. Unfortunately, my plywood is very dirty and covered in soot. Wiping off what you can and giving any surfaces that will be on the inside of the box a light sanding is definitely a good idea. The grooves we etched also need to be cleaned out a little bit. Scraping them out with a chisel works well to smooth them out a little bit and get rid of the excess soot. This will both help with glue adhesion when we assemble, as well as with smoother operation of the lid. Do keep in mind that the fingers of the box joint are all reasonably fragile at this state, so don't go too ham on your sanding. Treat them with care and respect and your kindness will be rewarded. Before gluing, make sure that you dry fit the pieces to make sure that everything fits together properly. Don't just push the joint together if it's tight. Remember what I said about the fragile fingers. Work it together slowly, wiggling it from side to side if necessary, if it is a little bit tight. If there are any overly tight spots, you can always sand or scrape a little bit with a chisel to make the fit a bit better. Remember also not to add too much glue, as it will just make a mess. Focus instead on getting glue into the joint with minimal squeeze out when you push the joint together. I assembled the box in two L-shaped sections, making sure each section was square when glued together. Before the two sections were brought together with the bottom glued in between, the box was again dry fit and the edges of the bottom part sanded lightly to ensure a good proper fit and that all the joints would come together properly. After that, it's just a matter of taking it apart again and gluing it back together. I think you've got an idea by now. Once all the glue is properly dry, we're almost done. 
All that is left is sanding down the little nubs that are sitting proud of the joints. While I'm using a belt sander here to knock down most of them, you could definitely do the same with just a sanding block. Of course, while you have the sanding paper out, you could just go ahead and sand down all the outside surfaces to smooth them out a bit, and to knock down the sharp edges a bit as well. Just look at those sweet box joints. Ain't that just the most beautiful thing you ever did see? At this point we could truly be done. But where's the fun in that? Any job worth doing is worth overdoing. So let's also give this thing a nice coat of varnish. It's not really required for a good box, but varnishing to give it a smooth surface will definitely kick it up an extra notch. If you do varnish it though, take care not to get varnish into the grooves to avoid gumming it up. For the same reason, I masked off the edges of the lid so there is no scraping of the varnish into the groove when opening and closing the lid. And that's about all there is. You now have a professional looking box with just a few steps of the laser cutter. Not only that, but if you followed all the steps properly, you may just find that the box is a little bit magic. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. Please do leave a comment below, like, subscribe, howl my name at the moon during a clear winter night, you know all the steps by now. Remember that there are more regular updates over on Instagram, including sneak peeks of coming videos. Until next time!